Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we're doing a another tier list. This time we're ranking all the Infinity Saga movies. A little uh, backstory before we get into the MCU movies. Right around the time Infinity War came out, I um, started playing a little mobile game called Marvel Strike Force. And uh, I've been playing that ever since, spending way too much money. And uh, all, uh, along the way, I became a leader of my alliance and i joined with a good friend mighty max who is going to be joining us today to discuss this so everyone please welcome max what's up all right so let's do this so um let's begin with the first movie that started it all which was um iron man one so um what do you? Uh, what's your thoughts about Iron Man One? Where do you rank the first Iron Man movie? S Man. being amazing, D being less than ideal. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was pretty amazing. Uh, it was the one that kicked it off. I mean, for I was trying to think back to like any movie prior to that that had anything close to that kind of feel, where like the you know. The CGI was totally on point. The story was exciting. Um, and, you know, I remember all the buzz back then of people talking about like this, you know, kind of this was the beginning of a much bigger story arc and they were going to bring everyone else in. So it felt really exciting. Um, you know, it was kind of the the rebirth of Robert Downey Jr., um, and kind of him becoming cool and hip and fun again. Yeah, he was like arrested or something like prior to the movie. And also, like, I think this is the first time you have Marvel do a movie, right? Yeah. Instead of yeah, like exactly. licensing their properties. And, right. you know, there's nothing wrong with licensing properties. Obviously, you get like a good movie like Spider Man 2 or um, the Christopher Nolan Batman movies, right? But then. Yeah. It's like a, not quite a needle in the haystack because you also got a movies like Electra though, and there's far <laughs> more shitty movies than Affleck's Daredevil, yeah. which is okay, but you know. So for yeah, me, a lot of people crap on that. I was okay with it, but yeah, you know, like uh, I I was even thinking of like the early, uh, like there was a couple of early Hulks. I, were they before? No, one of the Hulks is in the MCU, and that's the next movie we talk about. That's with Edward Norton. Yeah, and then but there were the, like two before that, weren't there? There was one with one really before. bad CGI. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking. I was like, man, like, like the jump from the CGI and that Hulk to Iron Man was huge. Huge. So, yeah, and I think the story of Iron Man 1 is just really solid, Yeah, uh, approachable to anyone. And, yeah. like, it's just about a guy who's just – loses everything and uh tries to become a better person right yeah, and that's yeah. essentially the story um for me i'm giving it an s tier yeah uh, that was definitely where i was at all right so the next one speaking of hulk is the edward norton hulk um for me i don't know how i feel about this movie for one it's kind of awkward because edward norton was only in that one movie but technically like all of the like what's the actor who plays hulk i always forget his name um oh yeah um it's, it, the first one i think was orlando bloom wasn't it? no no i'm talking about the edward norton hall i'm talking uh, about the one that's taken over since in like the avengers uh, mark ruffalo mark ruffalo now, so technically yeah. the story of mar of edward norton is the same story as uh mark ruffalo so like everything with abomination and there's, there's a little easter egg with like the leader he i mean the one scientist guy if you remember they had like a text conversation blue and green um going on the entire movie you had thunderbolt ross who's in like several of the other marvel movies like yeah, especially yeah. like it's all the same lore but like the movie itself wasn't that great and i don't know where i would like i'm probably like ranking i i remember way when i first watched it i i enjoyed it. i enjoyed edward norton's performance like i'm not i don't remember what happened i remember some like rumors of him like you know pissing people off or being difficult to work with um but i thought he did a good job in the movie i remember like you know laughing a few times but it did feel confusing where it was like going from you know whatever that first hulk was 
to Edward Norton and then jump to Mark Ruffalo. Um, and I, I felt like I didn't, at the time, I didn't understand who Abomination was. Um, I thought it was just kind of like a random character that they sort of came up with because it didn't seem connected to the whole story. So, I mean, I, I would probably give it like somewhere between like a B and a C. Like I felt like the CGI was pretty good. You know, it got a couple of chuckles out of me, but it wasn't like, wasn't great, wasn't terrible. For me, simply because you have the the after credit scene with the leader being born, who gets the gamma in his brain, and we haven't seen him since. We've seen Abomination a few times, um, like in Shang-Chi and stuff like that, yeah, but we also yeah. haven't seen like anything and like uh thunderbolt ross's daughter betty who's like the main legend so we we have seen the hulk obviously but we haven't seen the love interest and not even a mention of her right i would give it a like a d or a c so i think if you say b c and i say c d i guess meet in the middle and go for c yeah yeah you know it's funny like you mentioned the love interest because they've almost made like black widows hulk's love interest almost yeah yeah they basically the did and they just completely never even mentioned betty like what happened to betty right if you right. watch hulk comics betty's a huge character right yeah, so sure. like well, where is she um so moving on we got iron man 2 this is uh a little bit of a introduction you have um to don cheeto's war machine because you remember in uh iron man 1 you have a different war machine who wanted to get as much money, I believe, as Robert Downey Jr. to play War Machine. So they just recasted him, and we've had the same <laughs> Is that war what machine. Happened? I always wondered what happened. Yeah, I think it has to do with that. He wanted more money or something like that. And now we have like Robert Downey Jr., who's been Iron Man since. You also yeah. have Whiplash as uh, Mickey Rourke, and um, yeah. you have Justin Hammer in this. And again, here's a case of sorry we haven't seen any hammer enterprise since i remember at the time i thought the movie was great but in hindsight it's definitely not iron man one that's for sure yeah yeah i definitely i i really enjoyed the movie i thought mickey rourke was fun like i thought some the people parrot? took it <laughs> the parrot was a little over the top but like uh, when he came out as Whiplash, like during the race and like cut the car in half with his whips and stuff, I thought that was pretty badass. And I thought overall he was a good, a good villain for Tony. Yeah, um, I, I think the like, and I just think Tony being uh, Robert Downey Jr. being Tony is entertaining. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So it was, it was cool because that's the one too where didn't he come out? in like the beginning of the movie and announced that he was iron man no that's the, like the way iron man one ends and then oh, it like, ends that yeah. way i couldn't remember if it ended that way or the other one began that way yeah that was... this this one begins this way um you know i think i'm gonna like knowing what we know like we have all these other movies as you can see coming ahead i think i would say this is a solid b yeah that's where my head was at too all right, so our next movie is the third, the first Thor movie. So uh, this movie is where they introduced us to a non-human stuff, and we go to Asgard, and he doesn't have the hammer for like ninety percent of the movie, and the whole love, like the most of the story is like a love interest story with him and Natalie Portman. Yeah, that one was it was hard for me because uh. I was kind of excited for Thor to come around, but it wasn't the most fun movie I felt like. I think this uh, is also the introduction to Hawkeye. Is that... he's, yeah, he's Hawkeye is in the tower when he's trying to get like Shield sets up the base around the hammer. Mm -hmm. And then Hawkeye's there. Is that yeah? All right. Yeah. I, I like that one for me it was a kind of like middle road like i like that they were introducing new characters you know from the greater universe but i didn't like it didn't really excite me i felt like yeah i agree um i do like natalie portman she's yeah. gorgeous but that doesn't change me justifying what i what i think about this movie um i would say like i'm gonna 
it's in between the Hulk movie and the Iron Man two for me. Um, I would say probably like it's either a like a a C but above Hulk or a B but below Iron Man two. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like a like a B minus. Yeah, so let's just put it in the B tier here, and uh, left to right, better ones are at the right. So then after that, we had Captain America, the first Avenger. So this movie, we got the flashback. It's basically a World War II movie, right? Right, right, yeah. Yeah, that one, I don't know. Again, that one for me was like, felt a little hokey, you know? Um, you know, uh, I love the movie. I I, I, I don't know why. <laughs> I absolutely love this movie. I just... Um, maybe one of my issues with the only my only issue with the movie is you like condense all the world war ii into like a two-hour movie right but um the buddy from matrix uh who plays red skull kills it as red skull yeah and red skull was good um and i felt like the like the prelude or whatever you want to call it where they show him as like you know the scrawny guy who'll never give up and choosing him you know based on his heart that part was pretty solid um you know I, I guess i've always kind of struggled with the like oh he just crashes into the north pole and freezes for 60 years <laughs> yeah well you can't really blame that on the movie right that's yeah yeah that's... yeah that's more of the lore right itself and then they find him and stuff i don't know i guess my only issue like i said is like Right when it starts getting juicy, they do a time lapse and it go it goes from like first act to third act, right? There, there's not much of a middle act. They basically montage the entire war, right? Yeah, yeah. It was definitely it was like one long motorcycle ride through explosions, pretty much. Yeah, where it was just taking down the Red Skull bases and stuff. Yeah. And the Red Skull and Cap don't really have a really good battle. They do, but it's not that great. Um but at the end, when he wakes up and everything, it's pretty epic. I don't know where I would rank this. Uh, where are you thinking? Oh man, I I don't I don't want to put all the movies in the B, but I mean it was like I don't know. I felt like it was fun. It was a new character, um, but it didn't wow me. Um, so yeah, I mean I I would kind of like where I would put it right now is like in like the b the b range between uh between, between the two Thor and iron man 2 there yeah i uh i can agree to that um i might probably like it more than iron man 2 but i'll give this one to you and then i'll pick the next one <laughs> right. so now we have uh the first avengers and what i need to say like this movie at the time like there was nothing like it just so epic not much of a villain, but just crazy interactions and just crazy fight. One of the most iconic scenes in all, any comic book movie when they're all together. And then the whole, like, the key about staying the Hulk is always being mad, you know, and just he transforms and takes down the big, like, space thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, uh, what, what, what's the line? Like, oh, like, puny God or whatever, like he's smashing luke loki yeah like this is an amazing movie yeah, um the, for sure so where are you ranking this or any you got any other comments to say about this yeah no i i definitely feel like you know it's a you had a good point about like at the time there was nothing like it i tried i feel like i tried to rewatch it maybe a few years ago and like it didn't hit nearly as hard but at that time, a hundred percent, there was nothing like this, um, and it really had that big like blockbuster action feel, um, and the whole whole iconic team coming together was just too cool. I mean, it, for me, it would definitely be like an S tier. For me, I think like so we're basing it only on the Infinity Saga. It's either like bottom of the like, I guess. I would say A tier because you know what's coming, right? But at the same time, as I said, and as you reminded me at, at the time, nothing like it, right? So, yeah. yeah. Um, do you think it's better than Iron Man 1? 
Oh, hmm. I wouldn't say so because I think you can rewatch Iron Man. It's still a good movie. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that because I, I feel like a little bit was lost. It's it was more exciting at the time, and a little bit I think maybe because it doesn't have like such a strong villain. Um, and it's more about the team than it is about Loki. Yeah, you know? or what, what's the alien race called? I can't even remember. The Chishari uh, or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and they just get wiped out by the end. But yeah, um, still a good movie for sure. So now we're done phase one. And now we're moving into phase two. And phase two begins with Iron Man 3. And Iron Man 3 is universally hated just because of like, the Mandarin and obviously they've done it justice in 2022 with Shang-Chi but at the time 2013 or late 2020 uh 2012 I don't know how like you had aim in this movie but it wasn't aim like we know it it's like fire aim yeah yeah I can't I'm struggling to I remember that aim was in it but I'm struggling to remember exactly what role they played and how they were the main antagonist but it wasn't even an organization it was just like the love interest for uh one of paltrow's queer uh, pepper pots or whatever and she got like fire powers they're basically like human torches and then iron man has like the legion which is like the first time he has all yeah. the different iron man suits yeah, and everything. See, like i remembered enjoying the movie the first time i watched it like i didn't walk out of there and be like that was such a waste of time or like like you said so many people that you've ever talked to after it have all hated it but i did like i mean the mandarin thing didn't bother me that much but i didn't really understand the connection i'm still not sure how like aim and ten rings were kind of in the same movie but um yeah, it's it's hard for me because it, it was one that I kind of like, I kind of threw away, you know, like I watched it. I, I didn't hate it, but I, I don't think I would ever watch it again. I thought the Legion was cool when he, he called all of them out. Yeah, that, was a, that cool was a cool scene, scene for at sure. the end. Um, I think every Marvel movie, even the worst movies are better than tons of other movies, right? <laughs> yeah. But like, it's like you're comparing these with like, you know, if I if we try when we, once we get into say the next movie or some of the other movies then like how does this one stack up and to me i'm giving this like a you know i, I would say it's better than the hulk but i would even rather watch thor because at the very least you get natalie bortman right i'm For giving sure. the c tier above the hulk um yeah yeah i'd go with that I don't see yeah. any. So speaking of Natalie Portman, our next movie is Thor 2, The Dark World, which is about like the dark elves. And it's more focused on like, like, part of me, Loki's in jail and um, he breaks out and he teams up to say it's uh, to help him. And he, quote, dies at the time. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the dark elf is played by one of the uh, doctors from Doctor Who. Um, it's kind of a little known fact almost um again uh this is like it has i believe this is the first movie that introduces a second stone into it because you had the tesseract in the phase one and this introduces the ether or whatever and natalie right. Portman gets like infected with the ether yeah i mean this one for me I remember being bored. That's what I remember. <laughs> it's it's definitely a boring movie. I, I definitely think that uh, even like the elf stuff, nothing really memorable. I think they were like fighting and they're teleporting for some reason, like through the, through the different like the Bifrost or whatever. I, I don't remember yeah. why they were teleporting, but I remember them teleporting or how they were even teleporting. Um, you know, this is one of the things with any kind of... Uh, that's tough for me. I'm going to probably go with C also, maybe even D. I was, uh, for me, it would be like a definite D. Like it was one of the first ones where like I felt like I didn't really have fun watching, you know, yeah. like for All me, right. like the, the tears for the most part for me are about how much fun I had, you know, yeah, and how absolutely. much excitement I had around it. And I just didn't, it didn't pop for me. Now, I believe the next movie, if you want excitement, you got Captain America and the Winter Soldier. So Hydra is 
been around this entire time and they're actually infiltrated in every major organization. Then you have the return of Bucky, who uh, it's kind of surreal watching Cap 1 because you see Sebastian Stan as Bucky there. And then he's just a total badass. You have Sharon Carter in this movie, who's going to be major in the, like Captain America 4, by the seams of it. And then you have all sorts of uh, crazy stuff. And like that whole Hail Hydra meme was massive at the time. Um, for the longest time, I would consider this my favorite Marvel movie. Yeah. Yeah, this one, like like I just said, like measuring it on the excitement factor, man, this one was just like exploding everywhere at the time. It was so cool. The, I remember being so hyped just by the trailer when they had that like sick moment where like Bucky falls off the car or something and like puts his arm down and like stops himself on the road. Like it was just so cool. This one I, I would put like probably a solid A. If for me, I'm I, going S tier, and I'm going to use my uh, like I don't know what you want to call it, but it's my turn to uh, yeah. pick one, and I'm going S tier, and I'll say it's a better than Avengers for me anyway. Um, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, oh man, see, I can't even believe I would put it in A if I consider it better than Avengers. You know, like yeah, definitely had all that hype around it for sure. Um, so then, yeah, um, it's it's super huge, and again, very important movie for uh, what's to come in the future, and all that will highlight. Like now, Shield is no longer a thing, right? And um, like it's been always there. So the next movie, you want to continue the hype? You have uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Part One. Yeah, man, <clears throat> that that one was real good uh i don't know like for me it's funny like i have this moment like stuck in my head where i'm talking to some of the guys in my office about the movie and one of the guys walked in and he's like oh i couldn't even watch it like i walked out halfway through it was terrible i was like what planet are you living on like this movie was so much fun i had no idea about any of the characters at the time um I didn't know any of their backstories, um, but I felt like the writing, uh, the story, everything visuals, came together. Yeah, the music. visuals, just amazing. The music, so good. Just everything. Um, it. I also think like everyone references this movie because everyone knew who Captain America was. Everyone right. knew who <clears throat> Thor was. They just weren't in the mainstream. Nobody knew who. Like if you talk about like, t- like everyone knows who like spider-man is nobody knew who like they were like d-list comic book characters and for sure these characters made them and then you had a like chris pratt who was just coming off uh what's that one sitcom um with the parks and rec parks and rec yeah yeah and you had zoe salanda who's coming off avatar you have dave batista who's a wrestler and then you have like Vin Diesel as Groot, and uh, <laughs> I forgot he played Groot. Yeah, and then who's uh who's Rocket? What's Rocket's um, uh, buddy from Limitless, and he's in Hangover and everything. Uh, Bradley something Bradley. Oh, Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So S tier. Yeah, for sure. Do you like it better than Avengers? Here, here's why I would put it above avengers i would rather watch that again than avengers you know would you rather watch cap 2 or guardians that's a hard one that that would be a coin flip for me i don't know you know for me i've just watched them so many times or i can't enjoy them the same way i've probably watched both movies like 10 times and yeah um let's just put it here and we can revise it later it's a coin flip though and again, it depends on the day, right? Exactly. Um, so the next movie, if we're we're going high off Cap, we're going high off Guardians, we have two S tiers. Then we get to Age of Ultron, which if like mentioned before with Iron Man 3, we have uh Age of Ultron, who Ultron, if you know your Marvel comics and everything, Ultron's one of the best villains and the biggest villains and um, big movie um, no matter what you want to say about the movie this introduces vision this introduces scarlet witch we have uh, quicksilver in this movie 
very briefly. And yeah, like there's a lot of implication movie, but I don't know how good the movie was itself. See, this one for me, it came at a time where um, I was traveling too much to really catch a lot of current movies. So I actually missed this one um, when it was out. And I even missed it again when it was on Netflix briefly. And I didn't end up going back and watching it till a few months ago. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. But I, I, I still enjoyed it. Like, it definitely wasn't, you know, a, you know, a groundbreaking blockbuster. But I, th I still had a good time watching it. You know, I would go and rewatch it at some point. Uh, I felt like I don't, I don't know a ton about Ultron. I felt like they did you know, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver's backstory a little bit dirty. It seemed like, I'm not sure, but it seemed like they retconned it a little bit to make it their own. Yeah, well, um, they didn't have the rights to the mutants, right? So, right. yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I thought it was good. It was solid. Um, you know, I, I don't know, like, if, you know, if Ultron should have been more powerful or not, but it felt like a real serious threat to the Avengers in the movie. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I'll you know, like, give it an A. Yeah, I'm content with an A. I just like, like, this movie should be an S because of the Avengers, right? And, like, the money, I'm content with giving it an A, but because, like, I look at these other movies below and I think it is better than that. But, like, almost like Avengers movies are on a different standards than other movies, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, actually, we're not done Phase 2 yet. Um, I guess Ant-Man Part 1 closes the uh, the movie Phase 2. And this is, like, we've had all these super epic, like, major implication movies. Now let's slow things down. Let's ground things a little bit. And now we got more of, like, a... A comedic type movie um my only issue with this movie i guess again it goes back to the comics is the character of yellow jacket is actually just like hank pym is supposed to be well hank pym is ant-man and like he's the main ant-man in most of the comics and then because he helped create ultron he goes that's why ultron looks like an ant and uh he goes absolutely crazy because of what he did and then he like actually goes crazy and becomes yellow jacket. And then he becomes basically like a anti bad guy kind of thing, like, uh, like, like what winter soldier is or something. But then they just kind of made yellow jacket, a completely different character. So that part bugs me, but I do like the cast and I do like the, the humor of it and everything like that. And who doesn't love Paul Rudd? Yeah. Yeah. So that's interesting. I had no idea about any of the real backstory about Ant-Man and Hank Pym. I knew that Hank Pym was originally Ant-Man um, in most of the comics, but I, I didn't know that he his connection to Yellowjack and everything. Yeah. Um, for me, uh, this again, that one hit when I, I couldn't really watch movies um, when they came out. So I, I actually watched Ant-Man and Wasp first you know probably several years ago um i really loved it like the dynamic between ant-man and wasp was just great and then with you know hank pym always kind of like cutting in between them um and his even paul rudd with his you know his buddies and his security company oh there's a the one really, guy who just like dictates that uh, narrates everything yeah yeah like that they all kind of hit the right stride for me and I thought it was really really well done and funny um and then I went back and I watched Ant-Man um you know about a month or so ago and it was it was good but it wasn't as good it's, it was one of those situations for me where like I thought the second one was better um you know and I know we're kind of talking about them out of order here but you know, like I thought it was OK, but like the jokes didn't hit as hard for me. Um, it was fun to watch. Like you said, it was a good comedic break. Uh, Paul Rudd's fantastic. I can't remember that actress's name who plays Wasp. Um, um, you know, she actually like 
lives like like she's from like an hour like a little town like an hour away from my house like it's kind of crazy called fort saskatchewan it's, oh that's it's hilarious yeah it's kind of cool but like she's probably the biggest actor from like a little town right sure like, yeah especially yeah. in canada right they're yeah. few and far betweens unless you're a hockey player right so <laughs> um i'm gonna give this like i would say like you know i like it better than that man uh iron man too what about you uh definitely definitely like it better than iron man too yeah better than avengers too um mm. No, I would watch, I mean, Age of Ultron. Yeah, I would watch that over Ant Man. So I would. So I'd B put or it somewhere A? Between them. For me, it would be a B. I, it, like, it just didn't hit as hard. Um, I like the character uh, or the actor who played um, Yellow Jacket, but I, he just didn't. I don't know. There's something that wasn't like. He didn't hit just right for me. Yeah, because he's like a character that was created for the movie, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. the actor is pretty uh he there he was in this like there's this like horror type zombie show at the time that uh, was really big, and he was the main character of that. Um all right, so with phase three, there was uh, actually like I think almost more movies than there are in the first two phases. First up is Civil War. What do you think about Civil War? Dude, Civil War is one of my favorites. Hands down, it was, it hit all the bars for me. It's just bringing in all the characters. They had a great story, great conflict between um, Captain America and Tony. Um, it was just, it was fun. It was intense. The first time I watched it, I, I didn't know what was going to happen. It was, it was cool. Um, and I've I've rewatched. That's one of the ones that I've gone back and rewatched on my own, um, and I still thoroughly enjoyed it. And you know the cameo from Spider Man, just like everything, just oh, man. seemed to bring Broke it the all internet together. When it was announced, he was going to be in there, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and just that little trailer of him just holding Cap Shield and everything. Yeah. <laughs> it was something special. Not only that, it introduces Black Panther, who yeah. just kills it. Um, this movie, I always felt I never liked it that well when I seen it live, but looking back at it in hindsight, man, this movie is so important. It sets up the crack within the Avengers for thanos to come and basically snap right yeah it yeah. introduces spider-man it introduces black panther it it's the first time you see vision and uh wanda have some sort of a love interest right mm -hmm. um like it, it literally just keeps going even to this day like this is Sovolvia chords or whatever they're called like yeah. like everything about this movie is just marvel's past and future right Absolutely. um even like the black widow movie is solely possible because it is like because of this right yeah yeah and, they, and they, this one like brought ant-man into the you know into the, the avengers, actual avengers yeah yeah and then like i love that like one scene of spider-man he's like hey i seen this old movie um, where you tie the legs, go the old movies called Star Wars, and then Don <laughs> Cheeto's like, How old is this guy, Tony? Yeah. yeah, just great humor and everything. Also, you see the relation of Bucky and Falcon, um, which they get at their own show, right? So there's that like buddy, bad buddy cop kind of humor between them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's everything. Cap kisses Sharon in this movie, so it's like there's that like. They kind of teased the love interest that never developed into anything, but right. it was still there at the time. You didn't know, right? So, like, yeah. Um, what do you rank it? I mean, for me, it's it's a solid S. Um, like I said, it's one of my one of my favorites in the whole series. So, um, where in the S do you say it's the best S? Like for me, yeah, it, it's it's my top movie. I think. Um, as we go down the line, I'm trying to think of any ones that would beat it, but yeah, it's definitely for me. It's better than Iron Man one. Like it, watching it, I got more excitement. Uh, 
especially for the future, which, you know, yeah. and the movie itself is good, but it also sets up a good future, even stuff like Zemo and everything, right? The villain yeah, yeah. just outsmarts the Avengers. He doesn't outpower the Avengers. Yeah. And you can say he won. He did win, right? He split up the Avengers. Yeah. Now, this next movie is Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange, for this is the first time in a while where we have like a traditional origin story, I feel like. I guess Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, but it's been like a couple years removed and we have now an intro and Doctor Strange, you know, like when I think of Doctor Strange now, he's like basically replaced Tony as like the main guy and he really came to his own in the Infinity uh, Endgame stuff. But Doctor Strange itself is what we're talking about, kind of goes back to that love interest stuff and you have all the trippy visuals, the Dormammu have come to bargain and everything. What do you think about uh Doctor Strange one? That it was you know, it was good. Like um I felt like it was like you described, it was kind of a break from the norm. It was a full on, you know, kind of uh, mystic character, you know, which really relied completely on uh, you know, on the magical arts and everything, as opposed to any kind of like super strength or any kind of those origins. Um, it's not a character that I knew a ton about, so I enjoyed the backstory. Um, I, I thought that it was well, well put together. Um, not nearly as, you know, fast paced or as exciting as some of the other ones. But it was it was a solid movie, I felt like. Yeah, um, I would say maybe A tier. Yeah, yeah, I, I would feel like that's a good place for it. I would say below Avengers Age of Ultron. Yeah. All right, so the next movie is Guardians 2. And, you know, uh, you have Ego, the, the like Star-Lord's dad. Um, yeah. As Kurt Russell. I think yeah, 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 and um, you know, I didn't think this was as good as Guardians One, um, but and they kind of they did the thing I hate where the whole point of Guardians One is it's a like they're a bunch of like disgruntled idiots and they become a family. Well, they guess they forgot everything about Guardians One, right? And now they're a disgruntled family again, right? And not family. Um, you have Groot being a baby here and he's dancing and he's like the life of the party in this movie. Um, what are your thoughts on Guardians 2? Yeah, I similar. You know, I, I still really enjoyed it. Like despite all the, the things that you said, um, you know, I thought it was still, it was a fun time. You know, I love uh Kurt Russell as ego and and them eventually battling a whole planet um I thought it was I thought it was fun um for me I feel like it would fit into like somewhere in an A tier where um it's something that mm -hmm. I would watch mm -hmm. again I thought there were a couple of um you know sufficiently silly gags in there um you know, one, well, the one moment that kind of stood out to me with uh, uh, what's uh, Batista's character? Why can't Drax? Drax. Yeah. And they're fighting that one huge alien. He's like, I'm going to cut my whistle way out from the inside. And everyone's like, no, it's just as hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, like, I, you know, like, I still, I felt like it, <clears throat> excuse me. I felt like it, it still met the like, comedy action movie genre um pretty well even though it wasn't as good as the first one like so i would probably put it in an a tier for me above doctor think? strange because i can agree to a tier um yeah. i think it's above doctor strange um what about above age of ultron oh man i i, I still i might put it above ultron because i would probably a bit of a coin flip there, but like I, I, I might watch that one again before I watch, you know, Age of. And Ultron. you introduce Mantis to the group here, and yeah, right. It it teases Adam Warlock in here, and 
Yeah, they do. They, they got a lot of good stuff. And, you know, if anything else, the thing with the Guardians movies with James Gunn is um, the visuals. Uh, most Marvel movies all look very similar. And there's a yeah. very few exceptions. And Guardians is one of them. All right. So now we have Spider-Man Homecoming. <clears throat> um, Tom Holland's first time as Spider-Man. We don't see him getting bit by the bug. Um, no signs of Uncle Ben or anything. You don't see him really spinning around uh, New York or anything like that. But it's just more like a teen high school movie trying to get in trouble. We got uh, what's his name as um, a Vulture, uh, one of the Batmans, and Michael Keaton. Yeah. So what do you think about uh, <clears throat> No Far uh, Homecoming? Um, so this this was again one. I don't know if it came out when I was traveling or if I just skipped it because I was like, oh, great. Another Spider-Man origin story that I wasn't interested in. But I went back and I watched it, you know, specifically when you brought up this tier list. And I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I thought Vulture was a great, great bad guy for Spider-Man. Um, you know, him ended up being like, the dad, you know, spoiler alert, of uh, of the girl that he was interested Lizzie. in at the yeah. time. Um, uh, like, it all just really played well together. Him learning how to use the suit that, that Tony Stark gave him and the whole dynamic with Tony Stark, really, um, I thought it was very well done. It, you know, made me laugh a lot. I really enjoyed it. I never felt bored. Um what about you? You know, I um, I liked it for like, yeah, just a nice good old teen movie. There were some cool visuals like at the, what's it called? The Washington Monument or whatever. Um, yeah. Like really cool stuff there. Um, I guess like it, this is one of the things where it's nitpicking. It's just the fact that they don't own the rights to Spider-Man. So you don't have MJ, but you basically have MJ. But her name is Michelle Jones, not Mary Jane Watson. Right. Like you don't got Uncle Ben, you don't got Aunt. Like you have Aunt May, but like she's not like an older lady. They play up the whole like milf factor with her and everything yeah. like that. Um, I mean, see, for me, Marissa Torme is one of those like, I mean, going all the way back to when I was like a little kid watching my cousin Vinny. Like she's such a heartthrob for me. Like. I love the fact that they pulled her in. And for me, knowing what I know now, like if I had watched it when it came out, I might not have appreciated it as much. But knowing now, like with the multiverse and the different Spider-Mans, like I, when I watched it now, I just wrote all of that off as like, oh, it's just a different timeline, you know, like. Yeah, for sure. I just like it for me, I'm always going to bring that up. It's the same reason I know we're, now we're going into complete like why I don't really like the Venom movie so much because the suit doesn't go on Spider-Man first. Right. Um, yeah. But I do love Tom Holland as Spider-Man. The Vulture is great. Um, I'm definitely thinking this is for me at least the best A tier. Yeah. Yeah. That's right where I would fit it in. Yeah. Um, definitely not an S tier, but uh, there's something it is great. Um, so now we have a slew of just great movies here starting with thor ragnarok out the gate the best thor movie you for can't dispute sure. this for sure um just great humor we have uh what's the name taika watiti as the director for this and you have the little b storyline with world war hulk basically being the storyline and hulk is just a total badass in this and yeah they do the fight and everything and they got to escape the planet you got jeff goldblum in this movie and who doesn't love Jeff Goldblum, right? For sure. Yeah. That's... This, I mean, this this was another one that just like hit on every level of what I want in a Marvel movie. Um, you know, the action, the writing, the visuals, you know, the whole kind of the you know, the world that they went to for the um the whole arena that they were fighting on. Uh and you know valkyrie being there and being just wasted out of her mind all the time trying to forget everything uh it was such a fun movie and 
you know, not just one of the best Thors, but in in my opinion, one of the best in the in the whole series. Yeah, uh, maybe even best comic book movie. Period. Yeah. Um, I would say oh, this one's tough. It's definitely S tier. Agree. Yeah, for sure. Now, where do you rank this? Uh, I don't know if I would rank it above Civil War, but I'm kind of debating on after Civil War or after Iron Man one. For me, I would, I would put it after Civil War. Like I would, it's hard because okay. Iron Man one kicked it all off, but this one not only brought back my interest kind of in into the series, um, but because uh, like I said, it kind of took a break, and I think Ragnarok is where I came back into the Marvel movies, so it was like a huge reintroduction. Um, and just banging on every level mm -hmm, for sure all right so now is a big one we got black panther which you want to talk about like the media hyping up a movie look no further than black panther i think this is like considered the greatest comic book movie ever made at uh, like on rotten tomatoes i don't know if i go that far but i will say like you got um beautiful gorgeous scenes like just scenic like shots and like just of like Wakanda and everything that you got that like whole tribe, like very interesting lore and everything. And I believe they go to South Korea for a bit. And then you see the whole like, like South Korean, like nightlife, bright lights and everything. And then of course you have Killmonger played by Michael B. Jordan, who's just great. Also, um, I'd like this movie. I just don't consider it like even an S tier. For sure. This this movie for me, because of the level of hype, was a little bit of a letdown. It's a good movie. It's a fun movie. But like I when I finally got around to seeing it, I was like, okay. Uh, yeah, that's where like, know, like, <laughs> hype was like can be a bad thing, right? And... Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, and I it was for like you said, I mean, it had some incredible visuals beautiful um scenery and it and it was still a fun story it was a great origin story um you know learning more about the lore than than i had known before um but it was it felt a little bit flat for me based on i think maybe my expectation to the hype so, yeah the only other like the only thing like bad thing i can say if we ignore the hype and we just look at the movie for it is the like generic war scene at the end but it's like really small and everything i don't know if i really cared for that too much but it is what it is and i will say like this like going into like black panther 2 with just so much emotions and everything right yeah. um especially with chadwick's death like this is a huge movie I would say it's the best A tier personally. I mean, I, if we ignore I, the media. Yeah. I mean, I, I would probably still put it, I would still rather watch Garden of Galaxies 2 or Homecoming. Okay. Um, but the one, the one I will give you a point for that I feel like Wakanda has become so important in the future. You know, especially for Infinity War and everything that happens after, that they set it up very well. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And again, I think this is a movie you like. You might like. You go back to just knowing that Chadwick's gone now, right? Sure. And yeah. yeah, that there's that's got to count for something, right? Yeah, hundred um, percent. Like where Tom Holland's like, this isn't Tom Holland's best movie, like best Spider-Man movie, right? This isn't Guardians' best. But this is Chadwick's best Black Panther movie just yeah. by default, right? It plays a very important part into Infinity War. And uh, yeah, like then you have a uh, upcoming Wakanda Black Panther 2, which has some like that has to be a good movie on its own. It's got to set up its own self and it's got to honor Chadwick and like somehow kill off uh, Black Panther without killing him off like disrespectfully and everything. So I don't know. I think this, it all is grounded based on Black Panther 1. So that's my argument for why it's the best A tier. I'll give it to you. All right. 
So now we got uh, Infinity War. This, like, again, you want to talk about hype, you got Infinity War here. Uh, Infinity War was years in the making. Every movie we've discussed so far is leading up into this point. Thanos, few and far between, but the stones were always there. And this movie is as, like, if you want to talk about main character of this movie, it's basically Thanos, right? It's Thanos' story of him collecting all the stones. You have huge scenes like Deaths of Vision. You got, like, the whole, like, Doctor Strange, like, meditating and everything. Uh, Spider-Man and Guardians on the one planet on Thanos' planet. The rest of Dark Order and everything. This is a pretty great movie. Fantastic movie. And uh, I like I'm almost embarrassed to admit how emotionally upset I was when Star Lord screws it all up and starts punching <laughs> Chris <laughs> Pratt was getting like death threats and stuff yeah. because of that. Yeah. <laughs> um it's S tier for sure. Now yeah. Where do you put it in the S tier? You make it Ooh. the best. I would probably say it's the best. I, it it's lived hard up to, to the hype. argue for anything but the best. I mean, yeah, and it I don't was know just that good. And I felt like I, I felt like it lived up to all the hype. It had a lot of hype. It but had more hype than Black it, Panther, and I think yeah. it does live up to it. And yeah. then you have the beautiful, like the great relationships that, like, you got that everything about Tony and Spider Man, or Tony and mm-hmm. Doctor Strange. Or like, there's so many little dynamics there that just that, make that's this... when, um, like, we get introduced to the Black Order in that too, right? Yes, yes, and uh, yeah, they're in the second one, the Black Order, but they don't really matter. But like at the right. start, you have uh, Doctor Strange and Iron Man, and and they're play, uh, they're facing against uh, Cole and um, right, right, Proxima. No, not Proxima. Right. Uh, uh, Ma. Company Ma. Yeah, yeah, Ma. yeah, and then Proxima and uh, Colvis are going up against um, the Wanda and Vision, and then Cap comes out of nowhere with the bearded Cap, and he throws yes, the shield yes, after yeah. the train. Oh man, my theater! I seen that like the Thursday opening night. My theater just screamed when that shield <laughs> hit. Man, it was a great movie. Uh, like you can't like I don't know. Civil War was great, but this movie is just yeah, special, right? For sure. All right, so now you have Ant Man and Wasp. So, so, not an S tier for sure. It lowers it down. Yeah, again, again, similar to Ant Man, where it's like just a, like a little bit of comedy relief, uh, lighten the mood since you had half the universe die and all your favorite exactly. heroes, right? And yeah. uh, it's a good movie. You bring back Janet, um, who's supposed to be like. Any comic book adaptation of Janet of Wasp, you see, is uh, the Jan like the old Janet, like Michelle Pfeiffer is the character. I think that's the actress who plays um, um, yeah, a wa- yeah. the old Wasp Mom, in this. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So you got that, and then you introduce the whole like quantum realm and everything in this to a crazy degree. Yeah, yeah. Like I said a little bit earlier. This one, I watched this one before the original Ant-Man, um, and I really dug it. Uh, I thought the jokes hit harder. I thought it had better writing. Um, the story um, just came together a little bit better, in my opinion. Um, it's hard for me to... Uh, I'm between an A and a B tier on this Yeah, movie. I would say, the like, I probably B, enjoy Doctor Strange more. And I can, I'll get like, I don't know where I would rank Ant Man. Ant Man and Wasp, but I think it like they're, they're neck and neck. So it's like, it's either the best B tier movie or it's the lowest A tier. Yeah, I have trouble putting it on, on the A tier for some reason. Like, yeah, I, I like agree. I agree. Have so enough I think of a special uh, impact to hit the A tier. Yeah, you know, and maybe it's because we play Marvel Strike Force, but there's like little things in the Marvel movies that might like, stick <laughs> out, like Ghost, right? And how big Ghost was in Dark Dimension, right? So yeah. you have the end of Infinity War with uh, Nick Fury snapping his, uh, being snapped, and he the last thing he does is he grabs the pager and then he signals for Captain Marvel. Cue Captain Marvel. 
but not without its controversy because of Brie Larson said some stuff in the media that like, like, I don't know, I'm not going to get into what was said and what was done, but like people hated it. Some people liked it. Um, I don't know. Um, for me overall, if we look, if we ignore all the media, all the bad publicity that Brie Larson got going in, I don't think this movie was that great. I was super excited for scrolls. I was waiting for scrolls for a long time. And I don't know if I liked what I got versus the comic book adaptation of scrolls. And yeah, I don't know. Overall, it was just like middle of the road. I would even just say like maybe better than Iron Man 2. But that's B tier. Yeah, so I never... I heard there was controversy. Uh, I never actually saw what she said or paid really any attention to it. Um, and I didn't. I didn't end up watching this movie until we talked about doing this tier list. I I enjoyed it. I like. I kind of went into it with a little bit of a low expectation based on some of like the negative energy around it that I had heard, you know, when it was released, but I. I didn't, you know, I had fun. I didn't really know anything about Captain Marvel. I don't I don't know anything about the scrolls or the Kree. You know, like I think we had talked at one point in the game where like I assumed that Minerva was like this OP mega character in the movie from our game, but she's just kind of a sideline. Yeah, she's just literally there. She also plays another character in the Marvel universe. I can't remember who though just because they covered in makeup like the actress who plays Minerva right right that's yeah. funny yeah um, but yeah no like I I thought it was it was fun like I thought it was cool I thought the way that you know it gave a little bit of Nick Fury and Coulson's background a little bit was kind of fun um, the scrolls I thought were interesting um, like I said I didn't have any expectation for them so I could take them or leave them. I, I like the scrolls more from what is it? Um, far from home, like at the end scene. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I thought that was fun. Like watching Captain Marvel and knowing what was in Far From Home was kind of fun for me. Yeah, um, so yeah, like I we're wouldn't... looking at it at a different perspective. I was looking yeah. like I saw it live, right? And you saw it in hindsight, right? Yeah. Um, so so mean, where I... would you give it? Yeah, I would put it. I think we kind of came to the same conclusion. And for me, it was like a B tier. Like I could take it or leave it. It wasn't a very compelling backstory to me. Like it was fun, but like I didn't feel like it was important. Like Doctor Strange. Like, I felt like I really got something out of his backstory. Black Panther, obviously a huge backstory. This backstory, I was like, okay. Uh, you know, uh, I didn't feel like I was missing something when I didn't know it, you know? Yeah, I know one of the biggest criticisms of the movie is the fact that, like, uh, people who, like, mostly, like, people who really hate on this, their biggest criticism is that um, it's, she doesn't have any flaws. She's just perfect. Even like when they put that thing on her, she's just like kind of overpowers it or whatever. Um, and she kind of gets her power a different way in the comic books. It's uh Jude Law's character that gives her the power. No, it's not Jude Law's character. Everyone thought Jude Law was supposed to be the one uh older girl, but like in the in the movies, they kind of changed it where like in the comic book, she straight up has Kree powers. In this, so like she doesn't have Kree powers, it's like Tesseract powers right yeah and it kind of like is kind of self it, that kind of stuff is overlooked when you look into our next movie because like in endgame she fights thanos pretty evenly but it's because she is like her power is the infinity stone power right right so yeah i think we're good with that and now the next movie is the um end game and this movie was sequel one thing they do that's kind of crazy is they do a time gap. And I remember the theater just a big gasp that, oh, shit, five years has gone by. Then it becomes like a time travel movie. And then like your huge battle with CGI and everything and all these other characters. I remember a lot of uh, 
people wanting to see um, the other like extended universe characters come out, like the Netflix characters and stuff. But we never really got that. They just basically used like Doctor Strange sorcerers and Wakandans to fill in the army. Yeah. But it's definitely S tier. So what do you think about Endgame? Oh, man. I... I'm having trouble with this one because I I thought that the like the time gap was pretty cool. Um, kind of them trying to recover from what had happened was an interesting concept to me. Um, and then going into the time travel, like I thought that they did that well. You know, I thought you know the the great line about America's ass or whatever, like just hilarious moments in there um but the the end like the final battle to me was just wasn't epic enough i don't know how to describe it but i think like, you know my friend that i see these marvel movies with he has problems with because you see so many comic book movies these days it's easy to um blank out for these comic book movies and especially like a a 45 minute just cgi fight where the only character that really matters on the enemy side is thanos and everyone else is a disposable villain basically even the dark order right yeah yeah it just didn't feel like it had that like I don't know. Like it, the culmination didn't feel like it. It popped. Like it, it was such a cool moment, right? When like Cap picks up the hammer, like that was the cool moment. Versus like the end of the movie, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, you do have major stakes, like like Tony dying. You have Cap going back in the past, and not coming back. Coming yeah. back as an older man, so it really does felt like it's done so to speak but yeah it's not done it definitely like they they made a good job of making the mcu feel like it's done and now we're in a new chapter um for sure so in the s tier would you agree it's s tier yeah i feel like it has to be i mean now would you say it's better than the original iron man no no better than cap 2 oof I mean, no, I'd still, I, I would. So I don't. I would rather watch, probably. I don't know. I'd probably put it between Guardian of Galaxies and Aven- the original Avengers. Like it's like sure. I don't. I can agree to that. It's it's tough for sure. It's a long movie too, so you got to be. It's in the a long there. movie, right? And it's like, like I said, that just didn't hit hard enough for me. For sure. All right. The epilogue is uh, Spider-Man and No Way Home. So now we have Jake Gyllenhaal as uh, uh, Mysterio. Uh, We have Spider-Man back and now he's taken right out of Europe. This is the first time we don't got Iron Man anymore. And Iron Man is a very big character, like basically a father figure to Tony. And now he's gone and the blip is gone. We got the Fury. We got the Skrull. Um, It's a pretty good movie. Um, I don't know where I'd rank it. So let's... uh, what did you think about it? Yeah, I thought it. I thought it was great. Um, I thought Jillian Hall um, did a great job with Mysterio. I thought they did. Um, they used his abilities uh, very well, especially in like the last, like I'd say, like quarter of the movie where like there's like multiple, uh, you know not inceptions but whatever you want to call it like multiple layers of illusion on top of each other um i thought it was really fun the way that um, i liked how mysterio was tied back to tony like he was technically in cap iron man one and all that kind of stuff um you know after considering it i think it's similar to ant-man like to the but a tiers yeah yeah it was definitely um definitely intended more to be like you know a little bit it's funny because it started out comedic relief Mm -hmm. but like the end of it's pretty dark yeah it's pretty definitely dark and it just leaves you wanting more right and boy did did that weight pay off but that's another video for another time (laughs) but yeah no for sure a tier um you know 
I would say it's better than the original. Definitely, definitely. Now, would you say it's better than Wakanda, given what for I said me, earlier about Wakanda? For me, yeah, it's still better than Wakanda. Um, you know, I can give it to that. Spider-Man is my favorite character. I'll say it's better than Wakanda, for sure. All right. So, yes, uh, I guess that is the tier list. And, we uh, did it! Woot! All right, everyone. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to click that subscribe button. Thanks, Max, for joining the video. It was a blast, man. Thanks. All right. And uh, hope everyone um, checks out the follow-up video, which we'll eventually do. And uh, check you guys later. Peace.